In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to another Sunday on our Lenten journey, the fifth Sunday of Lent, and a very happy Sunday to all of you who have chosen to make Sunday holy by joining in with this celebration of Holy Mass. The fifth Sunday of Lent marks another change in our Lenten journey. You may have noticed during the opening hymn to see that our statues and cross are now veiled. Lent, as it were, has entered another level of emptiness. But this is because we are approaching Holy Week. We are approaching the moment of the Lord's passion and suffering and death and resurrection. And today in the Gospel, we actually hear Jesus looking towards that moment. His soul is troubled, and yet he trusts in his heavenly Father that this is the path not just of sorrow, but of glory. Remember a few weeks ago when we heard the Gospel of the Transfiguration, and the preface told us that the way to resurrection is through suffering and death. This is what Jesus trusted, even though his heart was troubled at what was going to happen, yet he trusted his Father. We embrace this Passion Tide, this time of thinking of the passion and death of Jesus, because his gift to us is hope. His gift to us is the promise of resurrection, even as we suffer, even as we sorrow, even as our hearts and souls are troubled and sad, his promise is that through death and suffering comes life and glory. Today in our Mass, let us commend to the Lord all who suffer as Jesus did, all whose hearts are sad as his was, that they may all find glory in Jesus Christ. To begin, we call to mind our sins and ask for mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, O Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming, it is the Lord who speaks, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, but not a covenant like the one I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant of mine, so I had to show them who was master. It is the Lord who speaks. No, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel when those days arrive. It is the Lord who speaks. Deep within them, I will plant my law, writing it on their hearts. Then I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There will be no further need for neighbour to try to teach neighbour, or brother to say to brother, learn to know the Lord. No, they will all know me, the least no less than the greatest. It is the Lord who speaks, since I will forgive their iniquity and never call their sin to mind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 
from the letter to the Hebrews. During his life on earth, Christ offered up prayer and entreaty aloud and in silent tears to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became, for all who obey him, the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. These approached Philip, who came from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put this request to him, Sir, we should like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went to tell Jesus. Jesus replied to them, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain, but if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it, 
Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a person serves me, they must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. And if anyone serves me, my father will honour them. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. People standing by who heard this said it was a clap of thunder. Others said it was an angel speaking to him. Jesus answered, It is not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. Now, sentence is being passed on this world. Now the prince of this world is to be overthrown, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all to myself. By these words he indicated the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I find that gospel very moving, even more so when you combine it with today's second reading. In it, we see Jesus in this rather strange outburst of prayer. It, it starts with an innocent question. Some Greek tourists have come along, and probably because they, they know Philip or his family, they ask, oh, can we meet Jesus? And so Philip and Andrew go along with this request. It seems simple, innocent enough. And yet something in that request prompts Jesus to this most remarkable outpouring. Now the hour has come. Something in this moment in Jerusalem prompts the Lord to pour out his soul. His hour has come. And what does he mean by that? He means the hour of his passion and his death and his resurrection. His hour has come. Here we are. This is it. This is what he's been working towards. He knows this is going to happen. All of the, the hostility and the opposition to his ministry of preaching, the word of God, the kingdom of God, it's all coming to this moment. Now the hour has come. Jesus acknowledges that he will die. He uses that image of the seed, of, of the grain that has to die in the soil, that has to become no more in order to become something new. And something new which offers something to others. The grain dies in the soil, and then the wheat grows, and the wheat is able to feed people. This is the image with which Jesus contemplates his death. He knows he has to die, but he knows that that death will bring about something new, and something that will be a gift to all the world. That doesn't stop him fearing it. That doesn't stop him going through the same human emotions that any of us would go through. Remember, he is true God and truly man. And so he says, my soul is troubled. That's exactly the same thing that we'll hear a week on Thursday in the Garden of Gethsemane, as Jesus contemplates that moment of his arrest. What should I say? Father, save me from my hour, make it different make it go away. But then he comes back and says, no, it was for this very reason. I have to die. I have to be that wheat grain in order to feed the world, in order to give life to the world, in order to save the world. Now, I find this remarkably moving because it's a glimpse into the mind and the heart of Jesus as he contemplates his passion. Sometimes I fear that we're so used to it we're so used to Holy Week, we're so used to the crucifix, we're so used to the story of his death and resurrection that we can forget that Jesus himself says, my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. And that's where I come to that reading from the letter to the Hebrews, the second reading that we heard today, which tells us about Jesus offering up prayer and entreaty, and then these words, aloud and in silent tears. Just think for a moment of the silent tears of Jesus. What was he praying? To the one who had the power 
to save him out of death. Again, we see that same prayer, that human response to the thought of his forthcoming death. And yet, even in those words, we see faith. He submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Now, when you hear that, you might think, hang on a minute, he wasn't saved from death. He did go to the cross. He was buried in the tomb. What's this writer talking about? But remember what the words were. It was not the power to save him from death, but to save him out of death. Again, we see here that death is not the end, but death is the means to glory. Jesus has to be the wheat grain that dies in order to be able to give himself to the world. He has to trust in the one who has the power not to save him from death, but to save him out of death, to make sure that his death is fruitful, that the seed truly does die and become something new that feeds the world. This is where the covenant that was promised in the first reading comes in. Not a covenant based on writing, not a covenant based on teaching, but a covenant which is about the heart. Just as today we glimpse the heart of Jesus in his fear, in his anxiety at what he will have to go through. So the heart is the place where Jesus will write that covenant of love and each one of us will receive it. We will be nourished by that bread of life that comes about through the death of the wheat grain that is Jesus, our Lord and God. As I say, I find all this very moving. There is a danger that we can see it as depressing. Oh, it's Passion time again, it's Holy Week, it's the death of Jesus, oh, we're all meant to feel gloomy and miserable. But what we've got to do is actually enter into the mind and heart of Jesus himself. To realise that we have to go through this week with him, acknowledging that his heart is troubled, acknowledging his silent tears, acknowledging his understanding of what is about to happen. We journey through it with him, but that's the point. We journey through it. And we do that so that when we too face our moments of silent tears, when we face our moments of troubled and fearful hearts and souls, we can remember that journey of Jesus, the journey through death, the wheat grain that dies to be transformed into something new and glorious. And we journey through this passion time with Jesus so that when we journey through our passion times, we may have the same hope and trust that he did. Now, together with the church throughout the whole world, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare in this Lenten season to renew our baptism at Easter, let us pray that we may die to sin so as to be reborn to eternal life. 
We pray for the church, that all its members may seek to die to self and to rise again in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our young people, that they may not submit to the wisdom of the world, but may allow the word of Jesus to speak to their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are searching for meaning in life, that they may find the Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer and sorrow, for all who are sad or who are bereaved, that they may see in the glorification of Jesus hope that they too will share his glory together with all our beloved departed brothers and sisters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment in silence, let's think of our own intentions for this Sunday. We ask for the prayers of Mary, our mother, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving Father, you sent your Son into the world to be the pure sacrifice that takes our sins away. Grant that we may faithfully follow Jesus through his passion and death to resurrection, so that we may be lifted up and may find ourselves in your eternal presence. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Saviour's command, 
and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My soul is sad, my heart is breaking tonight. Could you not watch and comfort me until light? Am I alone, surrounded only by night? Could you not watch one hour with me? And so I there is no one to hear. I am in pain. Will no one witness my tears? I am your God. And as my passion draws near, could you not watch what I Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just again, take the opportunity to wish you all a very happy Sunday. I hope everything is going well. Just one announcement to make. We've finalised what we're going to be doing for Holy Week here at St Vincent's this year. It is going to be very, very unusual. It's going to be very far away from what we have known or what we expect Holy Week to be. The services are going to be very restricted, both in terms of numbers allowed into church but also in the liturgy itself, much reduced, much quieter than usual. 
for all of our services starting next Sunday, Palm Sunday, so that includes the Sunday Masses next weekend, services on Maundy Thursday evening, on Good Friday afternoon, and our Masses on Easter Sunday, we're operating a phone line booking system, same as we did at Christmas. All the details are on our newsletter, which is available on the parish website, and you'll find the details there as well. The numbers to dial to book places. Please remember that places are very, very limited. Uh, so I was in two minds about celebrating these liturgies publicly at all, simply because the numbers are going to be so small. Uh, I don't want to create sort of panic booking on the phone lines, but please do consider that perhaps now is not the time for us to be fully celebrating in church. We're still in a lockdown and we still have so many restrictions. So perhaps this Holy Week, it's going to be very simple. Perhaps we just look forward to next year and hopefully everything will be back by then. So please do keep going, keep yourselves and others safe and keep on journeying through Lent with Jesus. Yes, we're coming to the hard part of that journey, the journey that he had to make through death so that his loving Father could save him out of it, so that Jesus could be the wheat grain that dies so that we may be nourished, so that his life may be planted in our hearts. Keep on going, journeying with the Lord. And again, have a lovely and happy Sunday. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, what a...